I received a comment on one of my previous videos asking for advice on writing personal statements and I thought I'd make a whole video about it. So this video is going to be about writing personal statements for STEM subjects. Personally, I applied for maths, so a lot of the information here is going to be more maths based, but I'm sure it will be somewhat applicable to all STEM subjects. First, I'm going to talk about the content of what you should put in your personal statement. The main thing that they're interested in is knowing that you're interested in your subject. They want to see that you've got a passion for your subject and are interested in your subject more than just the content that you've been taught in A-level. Have a think about what sort of maths you enjoy and then have a look on the course website that you're looking to apply to and see what sort of maths like that is taught in the degree. Have a read about what the syllabus of the degree is and if there are some things that sound interesting to you, just look them up. Even looking on Wikipedia and just reading through it, specifically simple English Wikipedia is really useful to get a general understanding of a topic. If you don't know what this is, it's another language on Wikipedia that's classed as simple English, which you can go through the languages. If you find simple English, it'll be a similar article, but written in much simpler terms, terms that you don't have to be an academic to understand. The most important thing is that you show a passion for your subject and that you're gonna enjoy studying that subject for three or four years. They want to know that you're interested enough in your subject to do extra reading because there will be a lot of extra reading required at university. If you can do some projects based on your subject, that'll be really good to talk about in a personal statement. Specifically, you can talk about what things you enjoyed and what problems you had to overcome. I'm very into writing code, so I did a lot of writing code based on maths. I wrote things like a trading bot, a neural network, and cryptographic hashing algorithms in code. I had a lot of fun doing this, and they gave me a lot to say in my personal statement. The temptation when starting to write a personal statement is to write a lot about extracurricular activities and you yourself. Generally, this isn't what they want to hear. They just want to hear about maths. For example, when I started writing my personal statement, my first draft had about 30% of the content was about other stuff, my hobbies, extracurricular activities, what I'm like as a person. After 11 revisions of my personal statement, that came down to 10% of it was actually about other stuff and the remaining 90% was just about maths. While it isn't necessary to have work experience about your subject, and de definitely not possible at the moment with the current pandemic, it would be really good if you could get some work experience that relates to your subject. I was lucky enough to get in to do work experience at a laboratory with a maths professor, which I talked about for a reasonable amount on my personal statement. So unless you're applying for this year, you might want to start thinking about planning some work experience that you can do I did mine in summer after year 12. I had one teacher that had a lot of experience writing personal statements. She drove me a bit crazy, but she was really insistent that instead of telling the reader what maths you're interested in, you should be showing them. So instead of saying, I'm interested in this area of maths, you should go into detail in the bit of area of maths that you're interested in and say what it is about that that you find interesting. This will use up a lot of the 4,000 character limit that you get in your personal statement, but it is worth doing. It's really what they want to see because they want to see you prove that you're interested in maths because anyone can say, I'm interested in artificial intelligence. Whereas if you start talking about specific parts of artificial intelligence, they can see that you've got a better understanding. You've done some deeper reading into that topic. So as an example, I'm going to read out a little bit of my personal statement and show you how it changed. In the first revision, the sentence read, One of my proudest projects is a trading bot that could predict and make a profit on the fluctuation of cryptocurrency markets. By the end, after 11 revisions, this was a whole paragraph. The last line of this paragraph, or the last sentence of this paragraph read, To find the optimum parameters, I built a training algorithm taking a partial derivative with respect to the profitability to then change each parameter by a small value proportional to its derivative. You can see from that how I explained, instead of just telling them what I did, I explained what I did and why I did it, so that they could tell that I understood and had an interest in the topic. 
I get that on the face of it, that might seem quite daunting, but you really get the idea of how they want to see the passion for your subject and that you have such a deep understanding of the subject. When you're at A-level, that will sound like a lot when you've not done a lot of extra reading and further research, but it's really the best way that you can show to them that you're a really good candidate, not just a good candidate. Now I'm going to talk a bit about the actual process of how you write a personal statement. I would recommend starting off with a plan, don't just launch into it. Draw a mind map about what areas of the topic that you're interested in. So for me, if I was writing about maths, I would have branches for the various bits of code that I've written that are related to maths. I'd have a branch about the work experience I did, and I'd have a branch about some of the extra reading that I've done. Just as a summary of each of the paragraphs that I did in my personal statement, as well as a short introduction and conclusion, I had one paragraph about the trading bot that I wrote, I had one paragraph about group theory and its application to Rubik's Cubes, and I had one paragraph about my work experience that I did. I then had one sentence before the conclusion about other things that I'm interested in, such as music and learning languages. In your mind map, for each of the branches that you've taken, you might want to put like key points on each branch of things that you think will be useful and interesting to say in your personal statement. After you've got this mind map, try and write it into a full draft. Don't worry about the character limit at the start. I think I had a friend whose first draft was about 12,000 characters. You can write as much as you want and then whittle it down, but the most important thing is you get everything onto the page that you want to, and then try and condense it down into what you think is the most important. You're then going to want to start giving your personal statement out to people for them to review it. I gave mine out to teachers and family friends that I knew that worked in STEM. Don't worry about the character limit when you give it out to people to review. You can tell them how far over the character limit that you are and they can give you some ideas on things that you could take out. You want to ask for as honest feedback as possible. Try not to be offended if this is a little bit blunt when it comes back to you. This is good because you want as much constructive criticism as you can possibly get to try and improve it. You don't have to take into account everything that you get told. I got quite a few teachers that would, I'd give my personal statement to a teacher, they'd say change this, and then I'd change it and give it to another teacher, and they'd say change it back. People always have different opinions on it. You want to get as many different views on it as possible, and then you can change it how you'd like, because at the end of the day, it's your personal statement. All they're giving you is just recommendations of what they think that you should change. It's not any obligation for you to actually change it. I didn't give my personal statement out to everyone at the same time. I'd give it to one teacher, get the feedback back, change it, but change it in a different document so that I have saved versions and then give it out to different teachers. I've then got the document of every different change that I made to my personal statement. This is really useful because if you get to your 10th draft and realize that you had something really good in your fifth draft but can't remember what you were saying about it, then it's really good to be able to refer back to that. It will be a waste just to delete everything that you wrote. Just a disclaimer for everything I've said in this video, this advice is based on what I did in my personal statement. This managed to get me into Cambridge, but I can't promise that it will get you in. Application processes change over the years, and of course it might be different for other STEM subjects other than maths. I hope you found this useful. If you've got any questions or anything that you'd like me to make a video about, let me know in the comments and I'll be sure to get back to you. Thank you very much for watching. Bye.